Hello everyone and welcome to Wolf Blaze Cycle Frontier. This is uh, the first part of uh, the closed beta early access that you can get in on Steam. So to begin with, it's basically a soft core version of Tarkov. You'll uh, run around, kill stuff in the uh, underworld, basically blue, and uh, fight your way through the alien hordes and the players to get loot and to extract. It's definitely a faster paced game in comparison to Tarkov. Uh, a lot of things that you can pick up on early on, like uh, sound being pivotal and the guns not being as heavily customizable as what Tarkov is, but it's uh, still a really uh, in depth game for what it is. You uh, accept contracts from the various factions that are out in this main world, and once you've done that and got your kit together inside your inventory, uh, you can choose whether you want. Uh, item insurance on or not, and then choose which map that you obviously want to drop down onto. Uh, I stick to Bright Sands for the majority of this video. I haven't gone onto the new map up until just recently. I did a match on it earlier and it was pretty sick. But in this video, it's literally just showing off the basics and what I did on day one. So when you uh, load into the map, it's literally a drop pod that everyone can see drop in. Uh, it should put you a reasonable distance away from others, but it's not overly, overly massive. So when I spawn in, I check my uh, settings quite simply, just because my sensitivity are a bit weird. Went to try out my uh, gun on an alien and realised pretty much instantaneously that all enemies have weak points, and then ammo types really matter. Like this thing hurt me a lot as well, which I really wasn't expecting, so I backed off quite a bit. It looks like when you fire this pistol at range, you're still aiming towards the iron sights and not the red dot as well, which really threw me off, so I missed a lot of shots in the uh, early parts of this video because of that. But once we'd finally taken this thing out, we ran over and grabbed this first item of loot, which was the pair of eyes from it. When we moved onwards next, we basically just ran up these stairs, checked around for um, certain things and finally figured out how to bring out my mineral scanner. See, so yeah, I missed the tutorial when I loaded up the game because I was trying to change the resolution to uh, 4K and it does not like it. It completely glitched out my entire game and shut it down, so I ended up having to reload, or oh, detect my settings again and then eventually we uh, sorted that out. Couldn't run it anything higher than like... 1680 by summer. I'm not even sure what the resolution is, but it still looks good, so I wasn't too fussed. But then, uh, once we figured out what the mineral scanner did and how to use it, we got on to doing the first small quest that we got given, which was literally just find a bit of nickel. And then we uh, quickly checked his map and dashed towards the uh, extracts, which in the first raid that you do are highlighted for you just so that you can get in and out reasonably easy. When you come back to doing this uh, in your next raids, none of this will be marked for you. You just have to look at your map and figure it out. So I took out a few of the other alien types. These are a lot easier to kill. You just shoot them in the head a couple of times and they die. They're not as bad as the spitting ones. And then I looted up the surrounding area of this place. The overall map design is, um, I'll say half and half. It's not entirely great there's a lot of walls that need sorting out because you should be able to climb up into your car there's invisible walls everywhere things that just slide you off when it shouldn't stuff that lets you stand on it and it shouldn't just little things but then as for how the world looks it is really good the maps they're not too big and they're not too small for the amount of players that are running around i feel like it's all right it needs balancing on spawns i think because when You've got a group of five people. If they already know that people are going to be spawning in these specific locations, it's really easy to stay on top of them. And you'll see it later in another video that I've got coming. I own about four people that spawn in all next to me in about two minutes. And I, I don't even do anything. I just stand there just shooting at them. They start shooting at me at one point and I still get the drop on them. But when we got uh, into the last building of this, I called the evac ship in, which it just takes a couple of minutes to fly in. You wait for it to drop down. Now in this time anyone can come up and kill you for your gear so you've got to be cautious. Luckily I was uh, alone for most of this raid so I wasn't too fussed. Once uh, it opens up you can run on in, 
you wait for the timer. I st it glitched out in this first raid and still said that I had to call the ship even though we're already here, but you would usually see a timer saying that it's taking off when this red light starts flashing. And then, sure enough, a couple of seconds later, you extract out of the raid, and everything that you have, you can put then into your stash that's in the, uh, in the hub world. It tells you a loot value as well, which I think is quite neat. Average price of what it'd sell to the vendors. Completed the faction quest, and then when we go and hand this in, uh, you'll see that I leveled up the faction. We accept multiple missions from each faction on the next bit, including the one that we've just handed this into. It's a good idea that if you're going to try and level up these factions, um, sell everything that you want to sell to one specific faction member, and then you can get the benefits of the better weapons and stuff like that. And then once I'd done that, I'd quickly run around the quarters and spoke to the guy at the bar to unlock the workbench and see what all this jazz were about. But it's literally just a case of you find certain items like nickel and the Stratus heads and stuff. You bring it to the station and it'll craft that up in a matter of a couple of hours. You can improve the station times by going into your quarters and upgrading the uh, various different parts of the workstation. Which you'll see towards the end of the video, I go into it a little bit but not too much. I want to keep it quite fresh. Uh, checked out the genetic store which has all the useless attachments that you can put on the guns none of them really make a difference at all because if someone starts to shoot you you're either dead or you're not going to survive long enough to actually make a difference with any of them unless you're actually the one that's engaged in the fight like uh, I checked out this shotgun in the next one which it were a really dead raid up until this point where this guy creeped up on my left ear started shooting at me and I'm just like oh no and then the first thing I learned, which I really did need to test anyways, is a fall damage. Yes, there is. Great time to be alive and a great time to be dead too. Went straight back into it and the second thing that I learned while playing this game is if you're going to get out a gun and stand around in a stupid fucking area, make sure you don't stand there for too long because you never know who's going to be looking. I took two seconds up on top of this and instantaneously, as soon as I stopped, dead. But more fool me for standing around where there's definitely going to be people who see me spawn. So yeah, I went back into the quarters, this is literally where you see me doing all the upgrades. I only managed to do one upgrade and I think I did the generator to start the cash that you can get for free. So, you leave this going for a couple of hours, you come back and you get money. Simple as that. Uh, you get different things for like the daily supp uh, supply crate. Every 24 hours you open a crate, every time you upgrade it, it's going to have something better in it. Out of a loot pool that uh, starts as white drops from anything that you get in the normal shop pretty much. Then, uh, third raid, I was just running around with pistol, didn't want to waste too much in terms of resources. Found a couple of things already, but then I started uh, hearing these fuds, and then these meters started crashing out of the sky. I thought this was really weird, but also really cool at the same time. It gives that bit of diversity to the map, it makes people want to come and check it out and what's going on. I was bewildered, didn't expect it at all. I thought it was just going to be a case of you run around and you do shit, and then, you know that's about it it turns out it gets a lot more in depth there is weather conditions storms that knock off the evacs uh, these meteor showers that I've seen happen and obviously you can see these landing the meteors in the ground and you can go over and mine them and get certain um, certain different like a uh, I think there's meteor core small pieces of meteor and then various uh, gems that you can find around the world as well as. Now these monsters will start going sick on the um, on the meteors. I'm pretty sure it's just because they damaged them which really confused me. I, I didn't know why that happened. But uh, once this last big meteor came in and crash landed like here I was just like yeah I wouldn't mind that. So I went over and disposed of all these uh, aliens that were already pretty much half health. I'm not sure if they were damaging the meteor and if they could destroy it but uh, I wanted to kill them off as quickly as possible just to make sure that didn't happen if it was possible yeah after about a million shots later and almost expending all my ammo finally killed the last one started to mine out the big one and as soon as we opened it up you could see that on the inside there was this uh, blue gem focus crystal we got a more focus one which is the green one the pure focus crystal and then there was the core of the meteor in the middle there we uh, didn't even get a chance to get it because this guy started shooting me and if I were a little bit more attentive to the sound I would have heard him running up on me like a couple of seconds ago but unfortunately it just 
slipped my mind and I really wasn't paying attention. Wasn't really used to how loud that you could hear the footsteps from as well. Uh, we narrowly escaped getting away from the meteor and behind this thing. We were slap bang next to one of these big walking monsters, so I actually panicked like hell. Ran around this tree because for some reason these things just don't like climbing over stuff. Literally no PvE enemy seems to like climbing. So, a little tip for you. Uh, we bolted all the way back to behind this fence and started to heal up. Simply because the healing took way too long. And I think if I had stayed behind the meteor where I started to heal, I would have been dead. So, we got behind here. And then from there, it was literally only a short walk from here to my extraction. So, I took the time to just quickly heal. And then I bolted my way over there and onto the uh, extraction. So things that I found that I don't really say that I want to hate about the game, but I hate about the game, is probably going to have to be the gunplay. Like, it's great and all, but at the same time you can have an AR that's, like, just white. And if someone's got a sniper rifle, you lose that fight 100% of the time, because you can't get 10 rounds into someone to do the 10 damage per shot before they can fire two shots out of their ball action and kill you. Now, I put this in the survey that they really need to address the sort of damage situation because it just feels all out of whack. Someone can shoot you at point blank range with a shotgun and do no damage, but then at the same time someone can shoot you twice point blank with a pistol and have it kill you. It's, it's so strange, like it's, it's either totally random and they just make it up as they go along, or uh, I don't know. Like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and he finally dies. It took me so many shots on target to actually kill that guy. He hit me, what, twice, and look at where my health is. And the pistol is literally like 8 damage, I think, and the AR that I'm using is 10. So I think they could use some tweaks on it, but maybe not, maybe, maybe, I don't know, I don't know. They need to do something there. Maybe make a bit of variation in what weapons you have to use because I, in the uh, next videos all I was using was a sniper to do one shot to either the head or body when someone stood still and then shooting them with an AR, two free shots and they'd die and there was nothing that anybody could do about it. But once we'd killed that first guy there, that was my first PvP kill, pretty happy about it, I just heard him run up and killed him off nice and easy. But then it's a weird form which confused me but fair enough. Uh, we called the evac in which were a little bit down the road but we got there eventually. And there was a dead body on top of the extraction, which I'm assuming someone had camped and killed and then extracted themselves. They left a lot of valuable stuff though, so when I got into the ship I uh, looted it up pretty fast. And then the ship took us out and extracted us. And that sums it up for pretty much this video. I'd like to say the game's got potential. I think if they bring it to open beta and make a few more changes, maybe add more to the maps because it seems a bit scarce for loot at the minute maybe not enough diversity in it all and then uh, they need to add some sort of story missions but other than that it's uh, it's pretty sick it's a good game if you're uh, into Tarkov and you think that that's a good game but a bit too stressful then this might be right up your alley check it out and then if you like the video come back for the next one and I'll see you next time